Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 235th episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it has, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. So I was considering saving this pick for my 250th upload, but I decided on moving it up a bit since it's already one of the more overdue 90s classics that I hadn't been able to get my hands on. But it was definitely worth it in the long run because Scarface's 1994 solo album The Diary is genuinely one of those examples I go to for a piece of hip-hop that I truly consider to be a masterpiece. However, this isn't anywhere near the first appearance Face has made on the channel. Because not only have I covered his dope 2002 solo LP, The Fix, I've also done videos for Ghetto Boys albums like 1991's We Can't Be Stopped or 1996's The Resurrection. Even still, there's really nowhere near a shortage of dope 90s material that falls under that Ghetto Boys umbrella. Like the group's 1993 release Till Death Do Us Part, or Scarface's 1991 solo debut Mr. Scarface is Back. And those don't even include all the other GB-related solo albums I just haven't found on vinyl yet. However, despite all the essential contributions these guys made to hip-hop, I think you could make a pretty strong argument for the diary being Face's magnum opus. And up there with the most essential southern hip-hop music that this decade had to offer. Of course, as I've discussed many times before on the channel, 1994 is one of those years that could probably make it to the finals if you were doing a bracket of the best years in the genre's history, so far at least. And while it's no secret that the East and West were largely dominating at this time, especially New York, this doubled as a time where other areas were beginning to produce hometown champions of their own, and the South was no exception. Outside of the diary, 94 was also the year that OutKast dropped their debut album, Southern Playlistic Cadillac Music, and we also saw UGK put out their sophomore LP, Super Tight. And of course, the underground had all kinds of interesting scenes and movements that were beginning to bubble up to the surface. While there's a number of important, groundbreaking, and influential pioneers in the same vein as Scarface, I feel like it's almost common consensus that he's one of the best to ever do it, and that's really for a variety of reasons. I remember a while back how Complex or Billboard or one of those kind of publications did a list on the top 25 Southern rappers of all time, and I recall seeing Southern legends like Killer Mike get asked in interviews how they felt about the placements throughout this list. And I don't think I saw a single person who was upset that Scarface had the number one spot. And he's one of those rare cases where you'll see big artists who are usually pretty braggadocious and adamant that they are the best to ever do it. And even they will actually tip their hat and admit that face is a whole different animal on the mic. Who you really have no choice but to respect and look up to. Of course you can make a strong case for Andre 3000 being the best rapper from the South. Especially if we're purely talking writing, flow, and lyricism. But as top tier as the Outcast catalog is, Scarface has classic material in both groups and as a solo artist. And as we are all painfully aware, Three Stacks has never released a solo rap album, and it doesn't seem like he plans on doing it anytime soon. But back to the classic at hand, one thing that makes The Diary such a full and well-rounded experience is how Scarface manages to check practically every box you could possibly want from a quality rap album. Dense storytelling, heavy, relevant content, a commanding voice and presence, you really get it all on this thing. One of the many commendable aspects about this LP is the feat accomplished with the track Going Down where Face manages to do one of the only non-corny interpolations of a popular song, because personally I've never been a big fan of rappers just taking the exact melody from a giant hit, then repurposing it into their own hook with the words changed. I'm not sure how other people feel about this song, so maybe I'm going out on a limb here. But in my opinion, it was pretty ballsy and forward thinking to pull from a song like 99 Luff Balloons and it still comes off like its own composition that's inspired by that single, opposed to a copy and pasted cover with no creativity or care put into it, where they just use the chorus because it's famous and popular. 
With this song, it's more like Scarface is giving it a whole new context. But when it comes to the most impactful and memorable moment the diary has to offer, you'd be pretty hard pressed to go against the song I Seen a Man Die, as it's one of the most poignant, hard hitting, and real pieces of hip hop ever written. And I have to mention that Face had an amazing performance of this track and some other hits of his when he went on Tiny Desk earlier this year. And I'll leave a link for that mini concert down in the description below, as it's a perfect representation of the sheer power and energy this dude holds as an MC. But back to I Seen a Man Die, the instrumental is absolutely iconic, and the killer G-Funk inspired synth that pops up multiple times on this LP shows how Scarface was beginning to incorporate sounds and influences from the West Coast. Which was also the case for certain other Southern contemporaries at this time, like 8-Ball and MJG. I feel like there's a perfect mix here between introspective and intricately penned concept tracks with the more aggressive and menacing songs like Jesse James, which is actually the first song I ever heard off this album and still remains one of my favorites to this day. There's only two features on Scarface's third studio album here, but it's a pretty significant pair of names with Devin the Dude and Ice Cube hopping on a track together. Which sort of harkens back to what I said a minute ago about the West Coast having some degree of influence on this LP. Interestingly enough, this wasn't the first time that Ice Cube and Scarface had been on a track together, as they appeared together for a posse cut that I discussed very recently on this page when I reviewed Cool G Rap and DJ Polo's Live and Let Die. There's only a few names that contributed to the production on the diary, like Mike Dean, N.O. Joe, Uncle Eddie, and Brad Jordan, aka Scarface himself. And I have to say, a group this small handling all the production, mixing, instrumentation, and engineering is pretty impressive when you consider how full and polished this album sounds. As iconic as it is, I feel like I can leave I Seen a Man Die out of the honorable mentions since I already gave it a shining recommendation earlier and instead shout out tracks like Going Down, No Tears, One, Mind Playing Tricks 94, The White Sheet, and the title track. For my three favorite songs overall on this one, I had to go with G's, Hand of the Dead Body, and Jesse James. Thank you for watching my 235th video. Next up, we have another classic that dropped in 1994, so look for that upload. And if you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know what moments you return to the most off this southern landmark. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? I guess. Look, the key to my soul is locked in the cage it opens The framework was made from my own rib cue What came first, the crack or the crack lighter Whichever one the first beam used to bring back